Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I decided to go outside today. Nature is so beautiful. The longer I stay out here, the more I realize modern technology just isn't for me. I've really been starting to appreciate the smaller things in life now. Look at this fallen tree. Just looking up pictures of fallen trees online isn't as organic as seeing a fallen tree in person in my opinion. <sighs> this is the life. Nature Pants is the episode where Spongebob decides to give up his current life to live a more free life among the jellyfish. This episode aired on September 11th, 1999, and is that episode where Patrick hunts Spongebob down in jellyfish fields and says, I got you now, Spongebob! I remember from back in the day, a lot of people were talking about this episode just because it's an episode from season 1, a season unanimously considered good, but most people these days seem to remember this episode for this face that Patrick makes. It's understandable though, I still remember when this pic went viral. Back in 2018 when the show was airing season 11, episode 438, Moving Bubble Bass premiered, and this shot of Patrick's live action face spread like wildfire almost immediately after this episode aired. This was also very shortly after Patrick's savage face rolled out online. Even though that scene is hilarious, I also think it's necessary to give the episode more attention for everything else. And aside from this, I don't hear people talking about this episode a lot, and I'm starting to wonder why. So let's watch this episode and figure out why this seems to be the case. Oh wait, I just realized. I can't watch the episode since I'm outside. Well, I guess I have to go back inside to watch the episode. Okay, I'm inside. Now let's watch the episode. So the episode starts up and Spongebob is making Krabby Patties when one of them floats up and becomes a jellyfish and buzzes away. The other patties turn into jellyfish too and fly away. Spongebob then floats up and turns into a jellyfish and they all buzz around jellyfish fields. Then it turns out that Spongebob was daydreaming and Mr. Krabs snapped him out of it saying the patties were burning. Spongebob got scared and threw a fire extinguisher at the grill and then a fire broke out. A fireman came and sprayed Spongebob with water, who then fell on the fire and shrunk down in size. Mr. Krabs then took Spongebob into his office and asked him why he hasn't been focused on work lately, and Spongebob says he's been thinking of giving up his current life for a more natural and free life among the jellyfish. I can see what he means by free and natural. With everything going on in the real world these days, it's almost like nothing feels natural anymore. Mr. Krabs laughs at this and says Spongebob wouldn't last more than one day in the wild. Spongebob says he could do that and throws his hat down, much to Mr. Krabs' shock. I'm surprised too. He just quit his job, and this early in the series too. At his home, Spongebob started giving away his material possessions to his friends, and Patrick starts to feel very sad about it, especially when Spongebob gives him Old Reliable, his most trusty jellyfish net. Sandy then arrives, and Spongebob tells her about how he's leaving to live in the wild with the jellyfish. Sandy wonders why the hell Spongebob would want to do that, but Spongebob doesn't listen to what Sandy says about the jellyfish and feels the others might join him one day. He then takes off his pants and runs away, leaving Squidward and Sandy kinda confused and Patrick sad. Spongebob arrives at Jellyfish Fields, saying he's home. Then he tries to follow the jellyfish around, but when they fly away from him, he then follows his jellyfish instincts. What kind of instincts are those? It's called following the jellyfish. The jellyfish eat kelp and when Spongebob tries it, he hates it. Then Spongebob walks through a crowd of jellyfish and calls himself Jelly Bob, but then gets stung by a jellyfish. Then he smells Krabby Patties and finds Patrick and Sandy having a picnic. The picnic was staged as an attempt to get Spongebob to come home, but Patrick was too sad to do it properly. He ends up breaking down and begs Spongebob to come home, but no matter what Patrick says, Spongebob claims he's happy. Sandy tries to drag Patrick away, but he's still too hysterically sad. Later on, Spongebob starts wiggling his arms and legs like jellyfish stingers. Oh, maybe those are the jellyfish instincts he was talking about. And if that's the case, why did he wait so long to start to do that? Patrick then returns, very mildly upset, intent on catching Spongebob with Old Reliable and making him a trophy. Spongebob starts to run away, but Patrick chases him all over jellyfish fields. 
SpongeBob hides under an arched rock, Evil Patrick appears, SpongeBob runs away and hides in a jellyfish hive. Patrick gives up and leaves SpongeBob alone in the hive. Soon the jellyfish return, but they start to sting him beyond belief. Later that night, SpongeBob is in a cave and tries to go to sleep, but the kelp he uses doesn't keep him very warm and he finds himself very itchy due to poison sea urchins on his body and starts scratching himself like crazy. I'll take being itchy over getting stung any day. My leg still hurts from when I got stung years ago. SpongeBob leaves jellyfish fields and goes back to Bikini Bottom. As he walks home, he sees all the things he loved and he realizes how he gave up his great life and friends he had all for nothing. When he goes inside, his friends greet him with a surprise party. They all forgive him and after Spongebob puts his pants back on, they all hug but soon they start to feel itchy due to the poison sea urchins that were on Spongebob's body. They all start to scratch, Spongebob is happy to be home and the episode ends. Okay, episode's over. Time to go back outside. Oh, my leg. After I try and walk this pain off, again. So that was Nature Pants, and now it's time to figure out why people don't talk about this episode often. Why is that? Well, after thinking about it critically, I will say the plot as a whole is a little weak. There are definitely some exciting scenes like the firefighter spraying Spongebob with water making him big, and Patrick going insane and chasing after Spongebob, but there are also a lot of long, slow scenes. Some of the scenes that last a while are Spongebob trying to sleep in the cave, his daydream at the beginning, and when Spongebob is walking slowly back to Bikini Bottom saying, buzz, buzz, over and over again. A lot of the episode is about that, and it can get a little old if you think about it, especially when Spongebob is constantly saying he's happier as a jellyfish. The plot as a whole is the weakest part of the episode in my opinion. Additionally, I've seen a few people criticize Spongebob being naked. While he was shown naked in some way before this, this is the first time where he was shown naked throughout a good majority of the episode. I will admit that it is a little weird, but I never felt uncomfortable while watching it, so it's fine I guess. There's also a couple times where it is censored a little bit, but it doesn't matter that much so I don't really care. I've stated this before, but I think the reason why nudity isn't treated as seriously as other cartoons is because most of the Spongebob characters aren't shaped like regular humans. In something like The Fairly Odd Parents, where the characters look similar to humans, I can see why it's treated differently there compared to Spongebob. So the nudity in this episode isn't too big a deal in my opinion, and I also like the part where Squidward says, I'll give him 11 minutes, after Spongebob takes off his pants. Speaking of which, it's time to move on to talking about the positives of the episode. As I mentioned, Squidward's 11 minute line always makes me chuckle. Fun fact, 11 minutes is the average length of a regular Spongebob episode. I also find the whole kitchen fire scene funny. When Spongebob throws the fire extinguisher at the grill, when the fireman sprays water at Spongebob, and when Spongebob shrinks down in size on the grill. But in my opinion, the best thing about the episode is Patrick. It's awesome how he goes from hysterically sad to borderline furious in a pinch. I love seeing Patrick chase Spongebob throughout jellyfish fields and the evil face he makes when hanging from the top of the arch rock. I also like the part at the end when Spongebob's friends welcome him home. It's really wholesome and a nice moment between most of the main characters. Also, just throwing it out there, the first couple times I saw this episode as a kid, I used to be confused at why the other characters were itchy. Yes, I do know that he was covered in poison sea urchins earlier, but he seemingly got them off himself when he scratched. But now it makes more sense that it was the bacteria from the urchins. Piggybacking off the urchins, I do have a couple of personal stories to share about this episode. When I watched this episode a couple years ago, I had a couple flashbacks where I was talking to a couple of my friends back in high school and was telling them, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I did this? Watching that episode a year after high school reminded me of those times. Now I'm not gonna lie, I also blocked out a lot of the times when I said those things, so I don't remember most of what I said to them. But I do know that I'm still good friends with them. I still see them at least once a month, so we're still on good terms. At least I think so. The only thing I remember really talking about to them was something like driving really fast on the freeway or turnpike. And I mean 
really fast. They kept telling me no, but I still thought doing so would be fun. But I never really had a chance to try to do that. So at this point, I've moved on from thoughts like that, and I never said anything like that to my friends after that, so now I can watch the episode without thoughts like that. Now for a couple of stories of the episode from my youth. I remember I got a little scared when the poison sea urchins appeared on screen, primarily due to Spongebob's scream and the music sting. <coughs> These days, I don't get scared or startled from that scene, so that's good. Also, from the first time I saw this episode as a kid, when Patrick said he'd make Spongebob a trophy if he can't have him as a friend, I thought he'd literally make a trophy for Spongebob as an attempt to get Spongebob to come home. And when Patrick shows the jar to Spongebob, it still could have been either Patrick's display for when he catches Spongebob, or as a gift to get Spongebob to come home. Now yes, I do know Patrick was trying to catch Spongebob like a jellyfish, so don't hurt me. So to me, this could be seen as either Patrick trying to get Spongebob to come back home, or to put him on display. But then later down the line, I eventually learned that Patrick was indeed intending to put Spongebob on display. A few years after I saw this episode for the first time, I realized what Patrick actually meant by saying Spongebob would look good on his mantle, and that was when it set in to me what Patrick meant by making Spongebob a trophy. Either way, I still love Patrick going crazy and chasing after Spongebob, so really, who am I to complain? Overall, I think this episode is decent at the very least. There are definitely some great moments spread throughout the episode, but with the somewhat weak plot and how Patrick's rampage could be a little misinterpreting, can bring it down a bit. I wouldn't say it's bad, but looking at it critically, I'd say it's more on the average side, but probably on the upper half of the average meter. Nature Pants is a fine episode. There may be a few weak points throughout the episode, and I will admit that can bring it down a bit. I wouldn't call it fantastic, but I still think it's a good episode. It may not be the absolute best episode of the series, but that's okay. Not every episode can be the best. It still has some awesome moments in it, which does redeem it in my opinion, even if it's just a little bit. Also, I just realized, I'm still inside. Why is that? I'm going back outside. Ah, that's better. The simplicity, the beauty, you can't beat it. Whew, it's starting to get cold. It might be warm inside, but at least the outside changes and looks different every now and then. The inside doesn't. So there you go.